Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review of the latest episode of Into the Badlands, Black Wind Howls. And this was a great episode, and I've been looking forward to it since I had seen the previews. And this just did a great job of moving the plot forward and having great action set pieces. So, of course, Sonny and Baji are where we end up with first, and... They are trying to find one of Baji's kind of smuggler contacts in this kind of similar to kind of Venice kind of town. It's like a Venice shanty kind of town, seeing all these kinds of different fish markets and everything, and they're trying to find Baji's contact. So they're going around, and they finally get to this kind of like betting place, and we see this woman and this guy doing a similar thing to Russian roulette, except it's this device that's got all these holes that a spike slash knife can slash through. And they're doing it, and they get to a point where it gets onto the guy, and she's like, all right, got your money pretty much, and he's like, you're cheating. And it then just starts off this great fight sequence, and Baji just showing off how much of a badass he is. And Sonny's just kind of like sitting over in the corner, and getting a drink and all that, and Baji's like, really? You're not going to help? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it gets to a point where a lot more people are getting into it. And then Sonny just badassly goes, uh, hold on, Henry. And he just starts kicking all kinds of ass. I mean, Baji put this one dude and Sonny just like kicked all three of these guys. And we see that the woman had dropped the coins. And this woman's name is Lily. And she knows Baji. And... They're like going through. Baji picks up the money. They're running through. It continues on through the stalls. Sonny, of course, is doing his traditional badass stuff, just taking things out. Then we see Baji just doing his whole best. He uses an eel at one point and then uses an octopus as pretty much nunchucks. And it's just whooping ass with him. It's like, yes. Lily, of course, is also whooping ass as well as she like slams a dude's face into some sea urchins, which that was kind of gnarly. But the one guy that Lily had cheated was about to get Baji, but we see that Lily stabs him through it and they're able to get to her boat. <laughs> they're trying to figure out what's going on, and Baji kind of went on a high five, but he's left hanging, and Lily's pissed off at Baji, and so he's like, what's going on here? He's like, oh, this is my ex-wife. He's like, well, this is going to be a pleasant voyage, isn't it? We then switch over to Lydia, and we see that she's kind of taking care of Odessa and Tilda from the whole refugee raid. Odessa is pissed off at this and kind of just wants out. She doesn't want to fight anymore, but Tilda's like, but I want to continue helping the refugees. So this is kind of where it seems that Odessa and Tilda part ways. I don't mind so much because Odette, I... Odessa can kind of hold her own at the moment. But she's not the kind of best one out of there, and I would have mat it would have mattered more if her character had been a little bit more developed, but she was used more to develop Tilda anyway. So it's like, okay. I don't mind that so much. We then kind of see what's going on with the whole pilgrim, and we get some interesting kind of things. Um he talks about Azra in this kind of interesting way of where it's kind of like a place. There's also a power and all that kind of... It's very weird and inconsistent, but it could mean multiple kind of things. And he's talking to these refugees being like, Listen, you all have the choice here. If you help us, we can get to Azra. It's a force, a power that can transform us, transcending our failing flesh, and become immortal. It's like, this is interesting. I kind of like these different kind of ways and methods of what this myth of Azure is or what it pertains. And I hope that we eventually get to the truth of it. We then get to Chow's regent dropping the bomb that Castor was there. And this, of course, infuriates Pilgrim where he then goes to confront Presidia. And him pretty much saying, I will not tolerate disloyalty. And... That if she tries to deceive him again, he'll kill her. So, she's got to watch with the game that she's playing. Because, 
throughout this episode and throughout what we've seen on this season, I kind of like Cat. Uh, I kind of like Pilgrim because he cares for Castor and his people. He's very similar to the Widow. But that also brings up what are the means that he's going to use to try to achieve his ends. Because that's where the Widow is starting to fall. She keeps... <laughs> it's interesting. She wants to change the Badlands, but it, she keeps doing things like the Badlands way in order to try and change it. So we'll have to see how that works out. We then get Tilda getting into the refugee camp and trying to see what's going on. Of course, the head nurse there is like, well, we need food and everything, and we can't tell who's our enemy and who's our friend anymore. You know what I mean? She's kind of just desensitized to what's going on, and Tilda just wants to help these people. So she kind of comes up with her own kind of thing. <laughs> we get back to Sunny and Baji, and they're talking about how Baji married her and everything, and... <laughs> Kind of funny. He was drunk. She was horny. And it was just kind of cool seeing that way. We then get a kind of cool part where Sonny sees his younger self and there's like, I've been on this boat before. It's like, all right, what does that kind of mean? What's going on there? And him bringing up that he's forgetting things that, well, he's remembering things that he didn't even know he'd forgotten with Ankara. He then goes, kind of talks with Lily kind of getting the rundown of her and Baji's relationship, that Baji was a pirate. It's kind of cool. This dude's been a monk, he's been a pirate, he's done all kinds of stuff. Baji's a cool character that way. And we kind of get Lily's side of what happened, saying that they were going to get all this money, get a boat, and just sail away from everything. But of course, Baji got a lead on Azra, took all the money, left the note, and ran off. And that's why she hates him. And that she agreed to take them to this to Pilgrim's Island because Baji gave her the money that she had already won, which kind of pissed her off. That was, which I can understand. We then get into the widow, and she kind of comes out, and she meets with Tilda, and Tilda agrees to be allies with her to finish off Chow and everything and protect the refugees, but that she's not the widow's daughter. She's not coming back that way. And they have a formal agreement that way. Hmm. See how this kind of works out. <laughs> and we start getting into important kind of things with Caster. We get, she goes in, we see that he is tied up and that he's got the acupuncture needles to stop him from using his dark gift. And they're start. They're like asking him why he'd done what he'd done, and Castor's like, "You are crossing Pilgrim. He's chosen by Azra. He can level cities with a gaze, and all these kinds of things." It's like, what are the extent of Pilgrim's powers? Huh. I like how that's brought up, and I hope that we get some more information on that. But of course, Widow decides to use Castor in a different way because Moon had said that, you know what? Why don't you just kind of chop his head off and send that as a message? She's like, "Well." Let's try some other ways first. Let us see here. We get then we uh, go on to get more information about Sonny. He has this kind of flashback, and we see him going throughout the ship. He's like really kind of confused, and he sees himself with the pendant from Azra doing an engraving this thing in the boat. He's like, "Well, okay, what's going on here?" And that evidently something had happened and that the boat got besieged upon when he was younger. We then go back to Moon and we see that the widow exchanges off Castor and all that. And she tries to play nice to get everything together, asking why this whole thing had to happen. Like, what's going on with the whole refugees and all that? And he goes... No problem, no problem. They kind of thought that they were enemies at one point, but of course Cressetia is the one that had instituted and instigated this whole kind of thing to give him a fitting send-off, but that's not how Pilgrim wanted it to go down. And she, of course, wants to get this done by peace. Pilgrim wants her to humble herself before him 
so that way they can he can build a better Badlands place, a better world, a better Azra. Her, she, of course, wants to make the Badlands more peaceful and everything, but of course she doesn't want to humble herself before any man or any person because of the positions that she's been in. And, of course, Pilgrim kind of understands that, and that's okay, and he kind of takes Castor with him, and then Cressidia has figured out that the Widow had the Dark Gift at one point. He had, we also see that MK and the rest of the people are all around Tilda as well, but this was just meant for those two, and she's like, well, Pilgrim can give you back that gift at some point. And I'm like, hmm, we'll have to see what's going on. So, they go off, and she's like, well, we'll have to see what goes on and what kind of works, because evidently she had done something with Caster. We then get into the final fight scene, because Sonny hears some things going on, and he gets up on deck, and we see that the River King has come on, that uh, Lily had decided to sell Sonny and Baji out because of the bounties on their heads, and the River King tries to appeal to Sonny, being like, listen, don't make your kid an orphan, and screw this crap and we just begin this great big ass fight scene we see Sonny doing like staff twirls and everything and the first kind of really good kill was how Sonny stabbed this dude through the throat and neck and I'm like oh that's probably going to be a kill of the episode then I'm completely like whoa Baji does this weird cool ass flip maneuver and snaps this dude's neck I'm like oh my god but then Sonny comes on in with this quick ass decapitation I'm like I don't know if I can... All three of them work very well. I'm like, eh, just get them both. So they're working their way through the River King's people and all that. And we get to a point where Lily has Baji, and Baji apologizes for everything he's done. We've seen this character grow throughout these seasons and what we've seen of him, and he's really, truly sorry for what he has done to Lily. She, of course, pulls her knife back, but... The River King's over on the side and pretty much tries to say, uh, Sonny, you better surrender or we're going to kill your friends. He's like, uh, I got a better option. He throws up, he takes out the one dude and pretty much gets the River King and slices him on the, on the, uh, face and pretty much captures him because he's the only one who can get them and get them safely to Pilgrim's Island. So, I hope that Sonny kills this dude at some point. Just... It would be poetic for the River King because of all the stuff that he's done to Sonny and just to get him off the board. So, or there could be an other even worse fate for him. So, I'm open to whatever happens. The part that we end the episode on is we see the caster is lying in his bed. We see Nix is trying to take care of him and he starts talking about how Pilgrim's lied to us. We're not what he says we are and everything and he gets really agitated. That's, of course, when MK comes in and Caster tries to kill him, but, of course, MK's not dying, so he's able to take him out and disarm him, and Nyx tries to get him off of Caster. This, of course, is when Pilgrim shows up and tells them to just leave, let me be with Caster and everything. Caster's apologizing and all that, and he starts talking about the samurai and their code of honor and how they would live for their master and give their lives for their master and how that's important, and how they live by honor and sacrifice. And then we see that Pilgrim kills Caster. Now, this isn't, it's, he like grabs him and like muffles his voice and then snaps his neck and then he cries over it. This is not something that, Ka that uh, Pilgrim wanted to do. He sees these people as in his charges, his sheep, his flock. And he does not want to harm them. And this was more of a mercy killing because he was dying. And he didn't want him to do any more harm to himself or harm to other people. And him crying over that and bringing up the visage of the samurai and the Bushido uh, code of honor that they had went through, the warrior's way, very, very well parallels what they kind of used the Dark Ones for with Pilgrim's Home Voyage. Uh, it's just really well done, and seeing Pilgrim cry after that really humanizes his character and shows him he shows us that he is a different kind of leader than what we're used to. Yes, he is at a point where he can where he will start probably using 
any means to get to his ends, but we are not at that point yet, I believe. I mean, he does a lot of bad things. He's chopped off all these people's heads, his messages. He is not above killing people to make a point. But he does want to help people and do the best for everybody, so we'll have to see how that conflicts with his character going forward in the series. So those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.